Editing the Dragon Pack entirely in Luminar. Firstly, I'd like to say if you purchased the Dragon Pack, thank you very much and I hope you're enjoying using them in your composite imagery. This video here is going to be entirely edited in Luminar. The previous video we looked at Photoshop, then into Luminar and back into Photoshop. So this one's going to be editing the dragons or one of the dragons and one of the backgrounds from the Dragon Pack entirely in Luminar. There's a few ways to do this and I use masking to accomplish the final image. Uh, if you drop the dragon in straight away as a PNG, you get the white background, so you have to mask out that white background. And you'll see in this video, I use the erase to get, to remove the white background. Another way to do it, depending on how you work and how your mind works, you can drop the dragon in place, get them to, you know, see by the video, how where you want the dragon placed. And then you could paint in the dragon. There's a couple of things I found while I was doing this and I'll explain them at the end of the video which might help techniques and might speed up process for you as well. So without further ado let's dive right in. Okay now that we're in Luminar and for this tutorial the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at setting the mood for the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into AI sky replacement and I'm going to get into sky selection. And if you're following along and using the Dragon Pack and you're using the same skies and everything here, the one I'm going to use is Dragon Dragon Sky, is Dramatic Sky 4. That one seemed to fit the mood, but there's a few adjustments to make first before we actually do it. So here's the adjustments. The first thing I'm going to do is flip the sky. Right, and you'll notice that there is, for the mood of this scene, is too blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a slight atmospheric haze just about there and I'm also going to change the temperature of the sky and I'm going to push it towards the warmer tones take it too far, I'm looking here and what I'm doing is I'm looking all around the image because I've done this image before it drops in very well the sky so I didn't have to do any branch patrolling or anything here to see if there was any conflicts within this, that sky dropped in really well. So I'm going to push that sky temperature a little bit further and I am quite happy with that. The next thing I'm going to do is go back into colour and I'm going to actually pull out some of the blues again in this. I know they're quite grey but there's some blue in there as well. So I'm going to pull back the blues again just slightly. Darken them down slightly and then pull the saturation out of them. Just to around there. That I'm quite happy for with this image. So, everything in here is sitting quite nice. And it looks as if it's all been one scene. So that's where we're setting the mood here. Once we've got the dragon in, we'll readjust the mood of it. But that's us get the basis of it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the dragon. So to do this, I'm going to get into layers and I'm going to add a new image layer. And this is when it takes us into masking the entire thing in Luminar. So for this, I'm going to take Crouching Dragon. I'm not going to take the stair. I'm going to take the Crouching Dragon here. But you can add any one of these at all that you want. I'm going to click Open. And that will drop in above. The next thing I'm going to do is layer transform because we need to get this dragon where we want it in the image before we start masking. So I'm going to drag them down to around about there. I'm also going to take the size down as well to around there. If you think the dragon looks too squashed or too stretched when you're doing this, remember and click the lock and that will lock the aspect ratio so that when you resize it, it stays where it is. So get to the point where you feel the dragon looks good to the size of this and then lock the aspect ratio and then scale it down. So I'm going to take them to around about there and I'm going to drop them down to about there. Quite happy with that. 
Click done. Okay, the next part of this is the actual masking of the dragon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up this edit for you so that you can actually see the masking taking place. Right, we're in the final stretch of this now. And for this, I'm going to use Dodge and Burn to create the shadow. And I'm going to show you a couple of wee things with this as well. You've probably seen this in a previous video, but I'm going to show you a couple of extra things that you can do as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a new adjustment layer. And in this adjustment layer, I'm going to get into Pro Mode, and I'm going to get into Dodge and Burn and start painting. I'm already set at darken with a strength of 50. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brush size up just slightly and I'm just going to paint away quite liberally with this if you were doing it I would take your time for it I'm just going to do this for the sake of this video and I'm going to curve it in there and under the dragon there just so that you get that effect paint too much and it will ruin it so I'm just going to do that then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a raise and I'm just going to get rid of that area just there and a tiny bit in there and there just to kind of give the shadow a slight more shape just about there, that might just be too much at the forefront yep it is, I'll go back in and darken that and this time I'm going to take my brush a bit bigger and I'm just going to do this And over there as well. Then I'm going to get into a raise and I'm going to be off the screen to do this. Just so that it's light catching through. Right, I'm quite happy with that. The next thing I'm going to do, I want to darken the front of the dragon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. And again, I'm going to get into the pro mode and I'm going to get into start painting. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the strength right down. Let's go for 9 or 10. And I'm going to take the brush size up a bit. Quite a bit actually, so that it blends when I'm actually doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint from here and paint in. And you should see that darkening down and there and across the tail and in here and in there not too much in there perhaps a wee bit down there and a wee bit there take some over that as well quite happy with that so what I'm going to do now is I am going to go back into crouching PNG which is a dragon layer and I'm going to take the drop down menu and I'm going to go in to the three dots here and mask and I'm going to copy the mask. Then I'm going to go back up to layer, adjustment layer 2. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to get into mask again and paste the mask. So what's happened here is, if I turn that off, you can see by this the lighter areas of the dragon where the light is hitting it but if, what I've done is I've copied the mask that I created earlier and I've put it onto here so any painting on this adjustment layer 2 that I started over here and then painted in is masked out again so if I turn that on it's only darkening where I want it to darken so that I'm quite happy with that the dragon itself is too vibrant so I'm going to adjust the vibrancy of the dragon but I'm going to do that a couple of ways. I'm going to get back into the crouching PNG and I'm going to adjust that in there and then I'll show you what I'm going to do from that. So I'm going to get into crouching PNG. I am going to go into colour and I'm going to just pull the saturation out of the dragon. Just to around where I think it matches its surroundings. Pull the vibrance back slightly. And I'm quite happy with that just now. So back into my layers, into adjustment layer. And that for me is giving a better mood and feel to this image totally. 
Okay, two more layers to go to this and then we're done. We're going to add a new layer. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go in to the creative panel and I am going to go into lots. The lot I'm going to choose for this one is, as and as you know, you can cycle through these, but I'm going to go for Long Beach with this one because I think it works well with this one. So I'm going to click that and I may pull the amount back just a tad to about there, saturation to around there, quite happy with that. Go back in, add a new layer, a new adjustment layer, but before we do that, I'm just going to show you where we started to where we are now. So if I go in here, there's the before, here's the after. And as I'm looking at that, I'm still thinking the dragon is too saturated. So I'm going to go back into the dragon layer before I add my final touch to it. And I'm going to pull back the saturation of that dragon. So go into my layers. Crouching PNG. I'm going to pull the saturation back even further. Then I'm going to go back into the top layer again. The one we just left. And last but not least, I'm going to add a look to this. The look I am going to add is one of my own looks, and this is Cine 1. So I'm just going to drop that straight in. You can add whatever look you want to these, just to get the final touch. And there's Cine 1 dropped in. I'm going to pull the look back just ever so slightly to around there. Turn the looks back off. And there we have it. Hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully you see how the image comes together. I sped up the part where I was masking out. Now there's another way to do that. The other way to do it, I masked out the white. So the mask was a reveal all mask. If you go in and paint in where the mask, you won't be able to see the dragon until you start painting. If you go in and paint in and you only reveal the areas of the dragon, yes, you'll go into some of the white areas, but if you go in and paint in some of the areas of the dragon, this could speed up the process for this because once you've painted in the dragon where you want it to be, what will happen is you'll be able to just go into the erase button and erase the white. You also may find that doing this with this type of image speeds up the processor and helps the processor work faster when you're actually creating the composites in it. Luminar, I'm sure in time, will have an edge detection brush, which would be absolutely brilliant, or a masking palette. However, that they are going to build this, I'm sure they will do it in the future because it will speed up the processes for all types of editing within the program. Using the mask that you've already created is a really handy technique to apply them to other layers and you've probably done that in the past but I just thought I'd show you that again. I remember showing it in videos ages and ages ago but I thought I'd show you it again just in case you're new to Luminar and editing within the software. Hopefully that lets you see the different techniques that can be employed to create your final images and by no means is that all the techniques that can be done you'll find your own workflow and you will work to that and you'll get better and better and quicker and quicker at it another thing i learned as well which might be a good tip for you depending on the processing speed of your computer as i say i'm using an imac with 16 gig of ram and when i'm zoomed right in at 200 percent it can be slow and laggy but it doesn't bother me doing that because it means I'll get the details better. When you're actually editing these, zoom out and take your time and see the difference in it. And then once you've maybe missed the odd part, you can then zoom in and then take that out, zoomed in at 200% or 100%, whatever works for you. So hopefully that tip helps you along as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to see more videos, please check them out in the channel below. And if you're currently not a subscriber, please consider subscribing because that would be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe and see you in the next video.